Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the Shoebuth C3 Pro helmet. Shoebuth's C3 Pro must be one of the longest running helmets on the market now, and it's been so popular for so long that any other flip front that Shoebuth ever come up with has a hell of a lot to live up to. The original C3 came out way back in 2008, and this upgraded Pro version came along in 2014. Ever since that original C3 came out back in 2008, Shoebuth have set their stall out that this is their quiet helmet. You look over it, you look in it, and you ride in one for a little bit, and there are little signs everywhere that this helmet was clearly designed to be quiet. Loads of those ideas have also inspired other manufacturers over the years, and I'll point out some of those as I run through what you need to know about the C3 Pro helmet. Firstly, the shell. Shoebirth have a fancy acronym for it, S-T-R-O-N-G, but it's mostly fiberglass, with some other fibers in there just to make it a little bit lighter. Sometimes, Helmets that are made mostly from fiberglass for the shell end up a little bit weighty, but it's not the case with this one. This helmet weighed in on our scales at 1509 grams, which makes this the lightest flip-up helmet we've weighed since we started making these videos just over a year ago. The chin bar releases on this helmet with this red button at the front. You push it and it frees the bar to be raised. The chin bar does click slightly when it's fully raised, just there, but the chin bar isn't held up particularly firmly. The C3 Pro isn't what's called dual homologated, so it can only legally be worn with the chin bar locked down. When the chin bar locks down, one of the few criticisms from owners is they say it's not particularly easy to tell if it's firmly shut because there's not the most pronounced of clicks. Personally, I didn't find that a particular issue in the time that I spent wearing this lid because this one does click down quite obviously, but perhaps it isn't as loud as some other flips when they close. One thing that is a big deal for this helmet is the ventilation. So the chin vent looks as though it only opens very slightly, but it's actually pretty damn effective. And a small amount of air flows through here, even when the vent is shut. That's something Shoebirth say they needed because they've made the seal around the base of the helmet so effective that there has to be some air coming through to keep people awake. The top vent sucks air through and it comes through two holes to the top of the head. Channels in that EPS impact liner inside mean that air can travel to the back of the lid and then out through vent holes at the back. There aren't any exhaust vents coming through the shell. Instead, air travels between the EPS and the shell and then it escapes through the mesh material here at the back of the neck roll. The visor itself on this helmet is quite important in the noise sense. These kind of raised teeth on the top edge of the visor are what Shubeth call turbulators and the idea is to smooth out the wind flow and especially stop the a whistling noise that can develop when people are riding with the visor up. It has two operating tabs at the bottom, one either side of the vent just here, and this must be one of the first helmets to have those dual tabs. The visor goes from fully up through four intermediate stages before landing in what's known as the city position, which leaves a small gap at the bottom for airflow when riding at low speed. To fully close it, you give it a firm push to lock the tab against the chin bar. The visor is protected against mist by a pin lock insert. Strictly speaking, I'd say it's not a max vision insert as it doesn't sit in a recess on the inside of the visor. But in practice, it doesn't need to sit in a recess because it stays clear of the helmet seal when you're lifting and lowering the visor. And it does the job of a max vision insert anyway by covering most of the visible area within the eye port. The visor on this helmet is an absolute breeze to remove and replace. You push in the two levers just here, one on each side, which handily stay pushed in and then you rotate the visor past the vertical and it will come free of its mounting. To put it back on, you just reverse that by putting the tabs in the right place with the visor just past the vertical and then rotate it back down. It's really that simple. There's a sun visor backing up that main visor too. Its switch slides backwards and forwards on the lower left side of the lid and the final step forward adds a bit more resistance to stop that visor slipping back down into your view of its own accord. It's not coated to protect against misting. Shuba say they wanted better optical quality than they could achieve when they had a fog-free coating on there. The outer visor and the inner visor on this helmet are both what they call optical class one, which they say would have been compromised by having a coating on the sun visor. So now let's switch to the interior of this helmet, which is where you see a lot of the stuff that has made this model so popular for so long. 
The lining is cool max coated so it won't overheat and nor will you in summer and it has a classy brushed feeling that's really nice against your skin. It's fully removable and it's been tuned to keep the noise down while you're riding. I'll give you an example of that. The fastening strap, which is a micrometric buckle, passes through the cheek pads and then it comes through this cover here. Once you've done it up, this curtain and then the other one on this side, they both cover all of this area. It means there's a simpler shape for the air to flow over. Certainly the idea is to make the helmet quieter. And there's another neat touch to look at while we're here. If you undo the chin strap here, you'll see that the cover underneath it, where normally they just sort of fold together and you need the strap to hold them together, this one does up with Velcro. So you've got that under your chin and then you fasten the helmet with the micrometric. There's another neat touch with the liner as well around the front. There are two small ears in the lining that can be folded in to the line of the vents or out of the way. So you fold them out like that and they will cover the holes where the vents come through to the inside of the helmet, which means that if there is any air coming past that vent, even when it's shut, this gives you an extra barrier to protect it. And then when you want the cooling air to be flown in, you just fold those back under and then you've got uninterrupted vent holes coming straight through directly to the inside of the helmet. The inside of this helmet also shows something that as far as I'm aware is also unique to Shoebirth and that's their anti-roll-off strap system. The vast majority of helmets they rely on just one strap to keep your lid on your head if you fall off and that's the one that goes under your jaw, this one here. Shoebirth use an extra two straps that work with the chin strap to help keep that helmet on your head. If I strip the lining out of this helmet, then I can show you how they work. So let's cut back once I've done that because life's too short to watch me take the lining out of this helmet. Okay, so that's that done. And now I can show you those straps on the inside. So the two come from the back of the shell here and then those loops allow you to feed the main chin strap through and these all work together to stop the helmet being able to roll off your head. So removing the liner is a bit of a fiddle with this helmet, which is why I didn't make you watch that. It's not something where you can just pull out a few snap closures and chuck the lining in the wash. Everything clips together in a neat and tidy way. And then you have to feed the chin strap through these two straps as well while you're putting the lining back in place. I've had this lining in and out quite a few times now for this video and I timed myself for eight minutes to swap it. That was two minutes to take it out and about six minutes to put it all back in in the right way. While I've got this liner out, I can also show you another touch of class about this helmet, and that's the brushed material that goes over the EPS liner around the head here. Normally you just get bare polystyrene here, but not with Shoebirth, and that's just another example of this helmet being a level up from the norm. You can also see the speaker recesses here, and they're elongated, which means you can slide the speakers back and forth to get them in a position that best suits you to put them next to your ears. You can fit a regular center intercom in here, but you will need to mount the control unit behind this sun visor switch. There are plenty of riders who've done that and been happy with the fit, but there is a more tailored solution. Shoebirth and Senna have teamed up to make a dedicated intercom, which fits into this helmet very neatly. It gives you the controls just inside the visor aperture here, and it makes sure there's nothing protruding out from the shell. There have been a couple of options over the years that this helmet's been around, but the latest is the SC10UA. So hopefully that's run through the important features. Now let's cover sizing and approvals before I wrap up. But first I'm gonna put the liner back in. So don't hang around to watch that. I'll be back in a second. Right, that's that back together. So let's run through those sizing approvals that I mentioned before. The C3 Pro comes in sizes from extra small to triple extra large. There are two shell sizes for this helmet. The smaller of the two covers everything up to and including size large. Well, XL, XXL and XXL share the bigger of the two shells. The C3 Pro meets ECE 2205 approval for the road and it's three star rated in the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme, which is bang in the middle of their rankings. As part of Sharp, the testers record how many of the impacts make the chin bar come open. The C3 Pro remained closed in 97% of the impacts, which is the same score as recorded by the original C3 when that was tested by Sharp. It's not unusual for chin bars to open up in that test. 80 out of the 111 flip helmets that Sharp have tested as we record this video had the chin bar come open on at least one of those test impacts. So that's the Shoebirth C3 Pro helmet. It's by far the most detailed helmet I've ever had to review and it's clearly been designed by a team of people who knew exactly what they were setting out to do. This helmet was way ahead of its time when the overall design was created back in 2008 and it's still a great product here in 2021 and it shows no sign of stopping. There are also loads of customer reviews to pick through. There's over 200 of them. So that was a job in itself reading those reviews and they tell an interesting story. 
Most customers are blown away by the quality feeling from the helmet and the majority of people call it very quiet. But the problem with wind noise is it depends on so many factors, not just the shape and the design of the helmet. It's impossible for a helmet manufacturer to predict how the wind's gonna flow off someone's bike before it hits their helmet. It's also impossible for them to know what kit that rider's wearing and how the air's gonna flow around that because that makes an impact on the noise too. So they can make a helmet that's quiet in most conditions, which it seems Shubeth have managed based on the majority of those customer reviews. But there's no way of guaranteeing that it's gonna be quiet for everyone. And also it's always subjective. What one person thinks is quiet, another person might think it's noisy. Feedback in general for this helmet though is really good. Of the 207 reviews we've had so far for this helmet, 170 people gave it five stars out of five. That's an 82% hit rate. And it says a lot that so many people gave this helmet top marks. So seven years on, it looks as though there's no sign of this helmet being replaced really. Shubath are bringing out their C5 really soon, it's imminent. In fact, by the time you watch this video, it's probably already out. And the idea is that this helmet's gonna continue alongside it. The C5 is gonna be the more touring focused helmet. It's gonna cost a little bit more money, have a higher spec. And then the C3 Pro is gonna continue to be a slightly smaller, slightly lighter helmet. You can put cheaper comms in this than you can put in the C5, and it's gonna have a slightly closer fit. The idea is that it will be a little bit closer around the chin than the C5. This does have quite a close fit, so it feels quite enclosing when you put it on, which doesn't suit everybody. So this is gonna be more of an entry-level helmet that's a little bit sportier than that new C5, and it'll be really interesting to see how the two compare when we finally get our hands on one of those to use. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shubus C3 Pro, but it almost certainly hasn't because there's so much to cover with this helmet. So if there is anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.